And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? I just stop reading there for the, for the moment. Um, the ni- ninety and nine and the one that's lost. I heard of a, a young girl, she'd never been to church before, and the pastor preached from this portion of Scripture, and after the service she said to him, I didn't know my name was in the Bible. He said, well, what, what is your name, young lady? She said, my name is Edith. He said, well, I don't think your name's in the Bible. She said, well, you, you read it this morning, he received sinners and Edith with him. <laughs> you know, that's a joke, but uh, you know, it's true. Uh, your name could be put in there. My name could be put in there. Christ receive a sinful men, women, and, and children. Bill, I mean, you, insert your name. Um, it, this is a chapter about lost things. As, as we read through, you'll see lost sheep, a lost coin, a lost son. And you've experienced it. What good can something accomplish that's lost? If you ever knew you had something and you knew you could use it and you needed it, but you couldn't find it. I mean, how many times have I gone down to Bunnings and bought something that I knew I already had, but I couldn't find? What good is something that's lost? It's, it's not any good, is it? Other than to think about <laughs> and have regrets. Um, and Jesus relates this parable because of verses 1 and 2. He's meeting with people and uh, the publicans and sinners draw near to hear him. And the scribes and Pharisees, that's the religious leaders, criticize him for that. <clears throat> you see there in verse 2, this man receiveth sinners, and he eats with them. Now, praise God that Jesus receives sinners. Folks, the problem was that the scribes and Pharisees wouldn't admit that they were sinners. You know, it's real easy to have spiritual pride and to think, boy, I'm glad I'm not like they are. It's, a real, it's real easy. I, I mean, you're looking at somebody. I, I meet lots of people. And boy, I, I meet people in all different levels of society and, and of culture and, and, and so on. And, and you know, it'd be real easy to say, well, boy, they, they should be good like me. <laughs> well, listen, we're all the same before God. And uh, I'm glad Christ receiveth sinful men. We, we sang that song for that very reason. Um, Later on in Luke chapter 19, Jesus said that the reason he came, he said, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That's why he came. I mean, how can a person be lost? Well, we go the wrong way. Isaiah said it. Uh, He said, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. You ask people, how do you think you get to heaven? Well, I think, and they tell you their way, and it's the wrong way. See, there's only one way to heaven, that's Jesus Christ. And we get lost because we think, oh, that looks like a good way. <laughs> My wife knows that I, I don't have a very good sense of direction. Her general instruction for me is, decide which way you should turn and go the other way. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not that bad, but anyway. Uh, yeah, it's easy to get lost. And as people, it started with Adam. Adam and Eve turned the wrong way, and we inherited their lost condition. That's what God says. Uh, We're lost. In Adam, all die. And in this chapter, I think Jesus is giving us one picture with three sides. He's telling us about things that are lost. A lost sheep. Later on, he'll talk about a lost coin. And then probably everybody knows the the story about the the lost son, the prodigal son, we call him. And in that, he shows also the triunity of God. Uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all involved in wanting us to come back to the Lord. Uh, He starts here with the lost sheep. And this shows, of course, Jesus. He's the good shepherd. He's the great shepherd. And it it shows the search there in in, in verse 4. Like we read in Luke 19.10, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Now, that's God's attitude towards sinners. God sees us as sinners, but he's, he's willing to seek us. And he's willing, if we'll uh, believe, to, to save us. You know, we should have that same attitude toward lost people, toward other people. Uh, we should understand God loves them. Uh, in uh, 
when uh, Jesus relates this story in Matthew 18, he relates it particularly to, to children. And, and I think, uh, you know, children in the home. Um, we need to be concerned about reaching our children for the Lord. And then it, let me read, start in, continuing in verse 5. He's seeking, it says, When he had found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Now he's not saying that there are some people that don't need to get saved. He's saying that once you've repented, you're right, you know. Uh, but he's talking here about uh, seeking and, and saving, the discovery. And uh, the thing that stood out to me is he finds us. You, know, you hear people say, oh, I've been searching for the Lord for so long. Listen, uh, the Lord seeks you, and you need to respond to him. Uh, and as well, he lays it on his shoulder. You know, here, here's this lost sheep. The tendency is when, when somebody's disobeyed and, uh, you know, you find them, you get angry with them. What, you know, you dirty, rotten sheep, you, you kid, or, you know, whoever it is, and, and, and you, you chase them back home. Not, not the Savior. He picks us up and he puts us on his shoulder and he carries us home. He rejoices to find us. It, this is pictured beautifully in the Old Testament with the high priest. The high priest wore, wore what was called an ephod, and on each shoulder was a, was a stone, and on the stone were the, the names of the 12 tribes were carved. Six on one shoulder and six on the other. And it's just a beautiful picture of, of God carrying his people. And that's, that's the picture we have here of, of the shepherd. Uh, he finds us, he lays us on his shoulders, he rejoices, he's glad to find us. Now, our part in this picture was being lost, sinning, running away. I heard of a man who... You know, they're having testimonies, and, and his testimony was, well, I did my part, and God did my part, and praise God, I'm saved. The pastor was a little concerned. He thought, oh, this, this guy might believe in salvation by works, you know. And so he asked him. And the guy said, well, my part was I ran away and sinned, and God chased me down and, and caught me. <laughs> that was God's part. And, and you know, that's, that's exactly right, isn't it? You know, we're, the Bible says there's nothing good in me. In my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Um, and when God comes to us, when God's Holy Spirit convicts us, uh, we have to repent and, and to believe. That there's a verse in, in Acts that I've, I've been appreciating lately when he says that they were, they were preaching repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we need to realize we're sinners before God. We don't deserve salvation. We don't earn it. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, God doesn't lose Christians, but he's looking to find sinners. Now, what a blessing. The, the main truth of this, these parables is that God receives sinners who repent. And he says it uh, several times. Uh, Joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. What a blessing that we can come to God. The next story he relates, verse 8, is the lost coin. He says, either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece doth not light a candle, and sweep the house, and seek diligently till she find it. And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Now this, this is a cultural thing that we probably haven't seen or experienced, but uh, Jewish women, mar married Jewish women, uh, they had a a headpiece that they would wear made up of silver coins that, that included silver coins. And that, that was just a, they didn't wear it all the time, but they wore it at special occasions. And, and losing part of that would be kind of like losing your wedding ring. This, this was something special to them, uh, very symbolic. And you see that the coin is lost. And one of the things you, you see there in verse uh, 8 is um, she provides light for the search. You know, the Bible talks about Jesus being the light of the world. It talks about his word. Uh, you know, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God's word, Jesus. And God has given us the light that we need. Uh, in John, uh, he says, you know, we run from the light because we, we don't like that. But uh, God searches for us. And it says that she, uh, she uses a broom. She sweeps the house. Now, 
And people don't always like you sweeping their house. You know, you come into somebody's house and say, oh, let me clean this up for you. What, what's wrong with my house, you know? Uh, well, the Lord knows, and he uses a broom, and he, he attacks the dirt. One of the applications you might make here is, are you a tool for the Lord? You know, are you used of the Lord to, to draw others to Christ? Um, and she searched until it was found. She, she didn't just search a little bit, oh well. She searched until it was found. Uh, the lost coin. Uh, someone pointed out, this coin was lost at home. Just because you have a Christian home doesn't guarantee that your children will, will follow the Lord. And uh, we need to be careful. You know, like I mentioned in, in Matthew when he told this, he, he was talking about uh, the little children coming unto him. Um, and in verse 9, when, when she discovered it, she rejoiced. The Bible says twice now, heaven rejoices when sinners repent. And the key is the sinner. You know, that's us. That's our part in this picture. Well, then it comes to the, the prodigal son. I looked up that word prodigal. It's not actually in the Bible. I don't know if you know that. Um, it's an English word that means a spendthrift. You familiar with, with that idea? Someone who just wastes their money? A reckless, wasteful person. A prodigal son. Let's read it, starting in verse 11. A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. I'm going to stop reading there. Uh, this is his going away. Uh, this is his wandering. And you know, the Bible says he went, went to a far country. The thing about sin is sin always takes you further than you want to go, further than you expect to go. And uh, his attitude was, give me. You know, that's, that's a lot of people, isn't it? Give me. You owe me. And uh, sin separates us, separated him from his family. Uh, when we forget God, it's amazing the depravity that we're capable of. You, know, you, you see things that happen in, in, in the world, and sometimes the, the comment is, they're just inhuman. No, they're not. They're just like you and me, who've given in to, to depravity, who've ignored God. You know, we think, oh, I would never do that. Uh, well, the Bible says it, it, it's, a, it's an easy thing to fall into sin. The Bible says he wasted his substance. He, he had lots of opportunity, but he wasted it. Riotous living. He has a lot of people engaged in riotous living. Uh, there's people who, who are sick today, I mean physically, because they've been living riotously Friday night and Saturday night. Raging and you know, different words that, that they use for it. Uh, he wasted his, his substance. And the Bible says he came to a state of famine. The whole area. He hit rock bottom. Now, I don't know if you realize it, but feeding pigs is about the worst thing a Jew could do. They don't eat pigs. They're unclean animals and so on. Uh, that was just the lowest job that a Jew could take. But he was willing to take it because he was starving. Uh, unfortunately, we live in a day and age where people can uh, live riotous living, and there's always somebody who will give them a meal. We had a, a man we knew who was a drug addict. His mother came to our church. He was about 40 years old. And uh, one time he said to me, so it doesn't really matter how I live. There's always somebody who will give me a meal. You know, we, it's hard sometimes to know when to show grace and, and mercy and, and when to say, listen, you, you need to go hungry. Uh, but you know, God is, is very merciful to us. Uh, there's a couple of verses in Ephesians that pretty much describe this young fellow. Let me just read them to you. Just, just listen. Ephesians 4, he says, Walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that's in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, that's tremendous sexual immorality, to work all uncleanness with greediness. That's pretty much a description of this prodigal son. 
And what that is, is God is giving us the opposite of what it is to be a Christian. The next verse says, but ye have not so learned Christ. That's not how we live as Christians. But you know, there's people who ignore God, and, and they live in blindness and ignorance, and they end up with the wages of sin, the results of sin, sin and selfishness. And the Bible says, no man helped him. Nobody helped him. Now, verse 17, this is a really important verse in, in this chapter. And when he came to himself... He said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. I'm just going to stop, stop reading there. He realized, the Bible says he came to himself. In our day and age, sometimes people use the expression, I'm just trying to find myself. Let me, let me tell you ahead of time. When you find yourself, you'll find a sinner who's a rebel against God. That's exactly what you'll find. And if you don't find that, you haven't found yourself. He came to himself. He realized that his attitude had been selfish and sinful. And he began to rehearse how he could humble himself before his father. And basically just ask, can you just help me somehow? He came to himself, and he realized, I've been a fool. You see, we're made for a higher calling than just brute beasts, just to respond to our, our feelings. Listen, you can't always control your feelings. You can control your thoughts, and God expects you to. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And it's important. You don't live by your feelings. Don't, we're, we're not just uh, animals that, that have, uh, uh, you know, built-in things that we, we do. You know, how, how do the ants know how to make things? And how do birds know how to make nests? Well, God just put it in them. They don't think about it. They don't have a class or a seminar. Uh, we're not like them. We have, we have to think. We have to learn things. <laughs> One of the most helpless critters in the world is a newborn human. And, uh, you know, we have to grow and, and, and take control. And God tells us to control our thoughts. And our thoughts need to be reflecting Him. And to me, this is the main point of, of Jesus' teaching here. You see, those, the scribes and Pharisees had not come to themselves. They had not come to a point where they saw, I fall short of the glory of God. I'm not the person I should be for the Lord. And you know, this is, uh, this is what they needed, was to come to themselves. It's what we need. There needs to be a time in our life when we come to ourselves and we see God's holy standard. God is righteous and true. We're not. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He realized uh, that the worst that could happen to him if he went home would be better than what he was experiencing now. I don't know. I, I find some people worry about becoming a Christian because they think, you know, God might send me to Africa. <laughs> we had a musical, you know, please don't send me to Africa. Uh, I don't mean anything by that, but, uh, you know, we think, oh, God's going to make me do something. God's going to... No. The worst God can do to you is going to be better than what the devil's doing to you now. Uh, right. Maybe that's not the right way to put it, but uh, first it was give me, now it was, would it be possible for me to be your servant? Can you make me a servant? Verse 20, he continues, and here's the father, when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. What that says to me is he was looking. But it continues, and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. He wasn't looking thinking mean thoughts. Oh, that son of mine wasted my money. If he, if he ever shows his face around here. Well, I've talked to parents like that. This was, this was a father who was looking with compassion. This is our heavenly father, folks. That's what Jesus is saying. The, these scribes and Pharisees were saying, oh, they, they're not worthy to, to be around us. Jesus is saying everyone is, has the opportunity to come to the father. Because he's merciful and, and he's gracious. Folks, that's us. We need to make sure we're, we're not those scribes and Pharisees, but they were believing what Jesus is saying here. 
There's joy in heaven over one sinner that repents. That sinner can be you. That sinner can be me. And God rejoices when we realize that we're not perfect. We are sinners. And the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. He came to himself. He arose and went to his father. And the father was looking, had compassion, and he received him. You know, if, uh, I don't know, I won't say if it was me, but, uh, you know, sometimes when we receive somebody, we say, now, you're all dirty, you, you, you stay over here. You know, you don't, don't come around me. No, he grabs him and, and hugs him and, and has compassion on him. Uh, Jesus said in, in John chapter 6 and, and verse 37, this is Jesus speaking when he says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. He re we sang that song, He receives sinful men. Jesus said in Matthew 11, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Come unto me. And the Father celebrated. Jesus is picturing God's attitude toward repenting sinners. There's joy in heaven over one sinner that repents. Now, uh, there's a lot of uh, applications we can make here. Maybe you're a Christian, but you're away from God. Maybe you've been running away from God. You're saved, but you're sinful. Yes, we believe that eternal life is eternal. Uh, when you're saved, you're saved. You're, you're a child of God. But Christians can still sin. Christians can still be rebellious. But you know, the Father wants us to be right with Him. And He wants us to be right with Him because that's the best way for us to be, for our good. Maybe that's you. Maybe you're unsaved. Maybe you've never come to the Lord. The Bible says in John 1, 12, but as many as received him, received Jesus, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You know, the thing that impresses me about that is he doesn't receive us as sinners. He doesn't say, oh, you're a sinner, you know. No, he says, you're my son. And we can say, Abba, Father. Well, let me give you a last warning here. If you look at verse 25, you might have noticed when he started, he talked about two sons. Well, here's the second son. Second son. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of his servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, who hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. He said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet, it was fitting that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Here's the elder son. He didn't run away, but he was still angry and out of fellowship with his father. Now, we need to be careful that we don't uh, resent the situation we're in. I've been living for the Lord. I've been doing my best, and God still allows this to happen to me. Sometimes we find it hard to rejoice at the success of others. Well, they don't deserve it. I do. And the thing I noticed about this in verse 28, the father went out to him as well. He went out to the first son. He, he goes out to the second son. And he entreats him. That, that word means, it's like in Romans where he says, I beseech you, I beg you, son. It, it, it's a strong um, uh, word that, that he's using there. The father went, went out to him. And, and folks, the key in all three of these pictures is the love of God. He wants us. He seeks us. He receives us. He rejoices when, he, uh, when we come to him. Uh, Paul wrote in, in, in 1 Timothy 1 and, and verse 15, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That's why he came. And then he adds, of whom I am chief. He realized uh, he didn't deserve God's mercy and grace, but he was so grateful for us. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and he receives us as his child. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. In Romans, God puts it 
puts it this way. He says, you've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption. You know, coming to God is not a, a fearful slavery thing. He says, it's, it's having a new home. It's having a new father. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we're the children of God. We become His children. And then he says, and if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. You know, that's the way God receives us. And uh, you know, what a blessing it is to see uh, these lost things. But his point is, when a sinner will repent, God will receive him. My belief is that faith and repentance are two sides of the same coin. You know, you can't really have faith without repenting, and you can't really have repentance without, without faith. You know, there's plenty of people who are sorry for the results of their sin, <laughs> but not everybody is sorry that their sin is against God. Real repentance uh, is, re re is a repentance that uh, does business with God. And, and real faith is based on God's Word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. It's not just believing anything. It's believing God. So the first son, uh, the prodigal son, the second son, I, I tried to think of a clever name for him. I, you know, he stayed home, but he's, he still had some problems. You know, I realized there was a third son. That's the, that's the man telling the story. That's Jesus, the Son of God. He came to a, a far country. He didn't come to get away from the Father. He came to do the Father's will. He didn't come for riotous living. He gave his life a sacrifice. He wasn't a prodigal son. He was the prince. He was the prince. He wasn't a wayward son. He was a willing sacrifice. And what a blessing. The Son of God, the great Creator, became my Savior. And all God's goodness dwelleth in Him. This morning, let me encourage you, uh, if you're saved, you know, what a blessing it is to know it. God loves us. God wants us. God has a purpose and a plan for us. If you're a Christian but you're out of God's will, listen, God is looking for you to be right with Him. If you're not saved, uh, God sent His Son for you. I mean, what, what more could He do? He gave His very best. God Himself became flesh, the Bible says. To die for our sins, took our, he became sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. God has taken care of it, and he, he comes to us. God might be speaking to your heart right now, God's Holy Spirit doing some sweeping, throwing some light around. You need to respond to him. You need to respond by repentance and faith. You can do it. Let's go to him in prayer. Father, thank you so much for your word. Lord, we don't understand all, all of these things, but what a blessing, the, the basic truth that you love us and you want us to repent and believe you. Lord, I pray if there are those this morning that are not saved, that your Holy Spirit would help them to, to come to you or that they would believe. Father, if there's Christians that are, are not living by faith, I pray that they would turn to you today. God, help us. Help us as a church, help us as a community, but especially, Lord, help us as individuals to love you because you first loved us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.